guys hello how are you doing today this is joseph from job concept okay today we're going to be looking at shader effector mograph shader effector and we're going to be looking at different um, applications of mograph shader effector and um, in my past tutorial we've, we i looked at um, some effector i looked at plain effector and also looked at cloner and i said i was going to be looking at each of these effector so if you remember in the previous in the last mobile tutorial i talked about um, how to make your plain effector to use it to offset your animation and all that so but then, and i also remember i said there are different ways you can offset animation so plain effector was just one of the ways you can change your animation timing and all that so, but the same thing we're going to look at the different applications of um, shader effector in this tutorial so I have something here in the screen, so I just this is just what I'm going to be looking at in this um, short tutorial. I, I quickly want to be fast with it. So we're going to be looking at the three applications that I know of that we can have um, for shader effector. It can serve, it can be used as um, a random in random transformation. So if you have objects, you want to transform this object random, you want to randomize the movement of the transform of the object, you can use shader. You can also use to change your color shading and also for animation randomization. Then that animation randomization is more of the animation offset that I did with the um, plain, plain effect or so. Then I said I'm going to be having a pro, uh, bonus here where I'm going to be showing you object-based random, random uh, object-based animation. And there's just one um, um, node there, just one. Thing you need to just check to change that so we're just going to look at that so let's look at the first one which is random transformation so we have this object and this is just pretty much what i have in the scene i have um a cylinder i have a cylinder which i put inside a cloner object and putting this in the cloner object the cloner object was set to honeycomb and i changed the offset direction to height and yz then I change the form mode from the normal square because it was here before. I change it from the normal square to spline. That's why we have the spline having it. So I change this and just added this spline to this. So it cuts off the position of all these things. So that's just pretty much what I have. So what I want to do now is I want to do a form of animation here such that it pushes this um cylinder either up or down and just some parts random parts of it pushes up and down so that is what we want to do we can we can we have a lot of ways you can do that but i just want to show you how to use shader effector to do that so the first thing you're going to do is to select this cloner and go to your mograph oh by the way i'm using r21 so you can just go to your either click here or you can go to mograph effector so let me just bring this up so you click on your shader so as soon as you click on your shader the first thing you notice is that if i go out of this is that you notice that you don't really see the object it scales this thing up and the reason is because by default when you add your shader effector under the parameter it activates the scale so you can use it to do your normal random um, so if i want to change the position i can change the position and just move it along this and also change the scale but one thing you can notice here is that all these effects, these things, this position movement affects the whole object, affects everything as a whole, not individual. So if I'm moving this, notice everything moves up as a whole clone. But how can we affect um, just some parts of this, some um, elements in this clone? So, so let's look at the values we want to move this. If we're moving this up, so let's say we want to move this up, um, let's say 80 for instance. So we should move this guy up 80 units, 80 centimeter, but everything is moving up. And the reason why this is happening, this is happening is because you have to go over to the shader and add what you want to use to move this guy up. So right now we need to add the shader to this object here. Okay, so if, you, if I click on this drop down, you have different shade that I can add. So if you add a color, so what color does is more like a uniform color. So right now, white means move it up exactly, take the maximum value. So this is more like what it's saying. Um, 
where is this take the maximum which is 100 percent of this parameter all right so it moves everything 80 units taking 100 percent of that so that is what white means if i make it black that means i want you to make it the zero percent of the parameter so zero percent of 80 means it's zero so meaning we are still back at the normal zero if i get rid of this now you notice no changes here because zero means zero percent of the movement along this value why white means hundred percent so if i want to have in between more like um um 50 percent so what i'm going to do just change this to 50 and changes that okay to that value so if you come to the parameter and you change you notice it moves a little bit up all right and notice it's also changing the color so we can we don't really need the color yet so we just come off this so this only moves here okay so that is what the color does so i'm going to get rid of the color so the color works more with only white and black black and white so we just know that then the next thing is you also have a, a gradient that i'm going to talk about i'm just going to talk about three of these um, the color, the gradient, and also the noise. So we have the gradient. So what the gradient does is that it adds a gradient. So movements. So if you notice here, it moves and goes up a little bit right here. And the reason is because we're having a gradient moving from left to right. If I change this guy to V, you don't have any effect because you should be moving from left to right, not up and down. So you should have this. So you see the movement all right so you can now decide say okay maybe you want to squash this also don't forget this works with grayscale value white and black so if i move this and squash this very close you notice what is happening so you're having this effect along this so you can just work with all this and have your effect as you really want so that is what the gradient does Okay, so we're bringing this back. Then if I want to kind of break this effect, then I can just come here to the turbulence and add turbulence to it. So you notice the turbulence and that's also having an effect on this object right here. So that's what this gradient, so you can actually work with the gradient here and just um, turn this to even a noise. So if you add turbulence to this, small turbulence, and notice what you're having. So it's beginning to it's gradually affecting this whole thing here. So you now have this effect. Then you can also smoothen this up by increasing your octave. So the octave is just between zero and 10. So then you can also change your scale. So the, the way the scale works is the higher the value, the smaller it gets. So if I make this value 300, get smaller and you see that. If I make this value more like 30, it gets very large and see the distribution here. So you can actually use this for creating a more like a digital landscape, right? so to say. So you can actually look at that and that will give you. So if you feel that these things are not pushing up much as you want, you can just go back to the parameter and increase this. So if we make this 120, see they start moving up even more. Then if I want it to go down, just put a minus sign and move down. Okay, so that is pretty much how to do that. Okay, so I think we'll go with the 80 and go back to the shading. So we have this gradient. So I'm going to get rid of this. You can also add animation to this gradient. That's another advantage of that. So if, we, if it comes to this frequency and you add frequency of 1, you play you see you start having animation to this all right so that is how you can have that notice the way this animation goes is kind of going more like still digital but if you want to smoothen the animation all you need to do is just give it a bit of smooth to it so we start having more smooth and that then you can decide to, okay maybe 0 0.5 to reduce the way this thing goes, all right? So I think I'm going to stop. I'm going to clear this and go back to the next one, which is the last one for random. So you have 
your noise. So noise will deflect this as a saying. So you can see the noise already deflecting that. Then you can go into the noise, more like your um, shader, and choose a particular noise that you want here. So for instance, if I still want to choose this Verona, um, that's a Verona one, thereabout. And you can see the effect, we can increase this scale. So we'll say 500, that affects this. You can also come over here and increase the um, contrast between this so you can get to have a sense of what you're going to be having. You can even further bring this uh, contrast down. Then you can also add animation to this scene. So if I make this 0 0.8 and play, you have similar results. All right, so this is you adding your own animation to a still object, all right? So you are just, the animation is working with the um, parameter here and it's deflecting these objects at that value. So that's what the animation, the kind of animation we're having here. So, so that's it with um, this, using your sh shader effector to drive the, um, random transform to randomly transform your object so let's look at color shading so if what you want is you don't want to change the position you just want to randomize the color then you can go back to this parameter and change this from that to coming over to the color so you can just add a particular color so you have the vector color custom color so the vector color will take the color of the vector and then add it over to this object then you also have your field you have your custom so if you look at this effect of color you don't really have anything the reason is because it's um require you to add a texture to this object for this to have effect but before i go to this let me just quickly come back to this um custom talk about this and we'll go to the effect of color so if you look at the custom color it's making use of this white color right so we can change this white color to whatever color we want so if we say we want to have this reddish color that is what we're going to have then you have your alpha strength so what the alpha strength does is also with your texture by the time you're adding that then for the blend mode the default is default which is making use of this normal color if i choose add it's going to add um, this color on top of um um the uh, i don't really know how to explain this um looks for this um cloner the color that the cloner has and add the shader to it color from the shader to it so that is what that does then you also have your subtract so you can subtract from it then you can also multiply you can divide so you can start seeing that. So if you look at this subtract, for instance, so it's subtracting red from that. So you're having, so more like um, the negative of red is um, kind of this blue. So if I start changing this, you start seeing the effect that you're looking for. So you can, from here, choose a particular color that you want. Then don't forget, you can mix this color with your shader. So if you go to your shader and you click on noise, for instance, and this noise will only have effect on the color, all right? So if you come here and let's choose the same um, noise we chose, Verna 1, and increase this guy to 500, I think. Okay, so let's come back here. So notice we didn't really see the effects of this noise because our use alpha strength is turned off and the alpha strength is taken is this alpha, this uh, object here. So if you want to have the effect of this on the color, so what you have to do is bring, bring back this. So it starts seeing the effect. So it, now what that means now is I can go here and animate this. So if I add an animation to this and play, that would change the color. Of this gradient so if i want to couple this animation with the position or the transformation all i need to do is just come back to this add a transform to it so as this guy is moving up 
color is also changing and as they're moving and all that so you have that okay then you now have this effector also so the effector is now still referencing back to this shader all right so you know before we didn't have the shader we didn't really have anything so what this parameter is saying is that you should use the color of the vector, right? So right now, if I undo that, the vector is making use of this color. So that is what this is giving us. And don't forget, we're also subtracting. So if you make this default, so this is what we get to have, all right? So if we subtract or multiply and do all this blend mode, that is the effect you're going to be having here. So let's go to, with the default. So we can decide to now say, okay, for this, we want to push this even more. So bring this white a little bit here. You notice you start having that color effect on this object, all right? So that means now, with exception to this color shader, you can now come in and choose a particular color for this. And that is what you're going to be having, the color you choose here. So, the, so you should note, that for you to have anything other than grayscale value here, that means you want to use it to drive the color channel. You want to use it to drive the color of um, the texture of this object. That is the only time you can do that. But if you want to use it to change the position of the transform or any other thing, you want to use your grayscale value, all right? So let's say we want to mix this between this um, green and um, pink, pink, this green and pink. Let's choose a very deep with very dark shade of this and see what happens. Start seeing the changes in this object. So if you come back here and add your um, blend mode, start seeing the changes and all that. So depending on whatever you, have, you want, if you really like that, then that should solve that. Okay, so another way you can also apply this shader is by going and creating a texture so i'm going to do this so if you create a texture and add it to your cloner now i'm going to show you a technique that i use if you add it to the cloner and then under this cloner color you click here you want it to drive the color so you come to this um MoGraph, you see MoGraph here, so you want to choose color shader. So if you go into that color shader, what do you want to drive? You want to drive the color. So that is what you're going to have. So if you now come to this and change this off. Okay, before I do that, sorry, I want to quickly copy out this, copy, then I can clear. Okay, so if you come to this smoke um, shader, you notice the, I didn't touch this channel. What I just did was to work with the custom shader. So I can start say I want to change the color here. So if I say I want to change color, it's going to ask for um, it's going to ask for the color material. So or the material tag. So I'll add this tag. Notice nothing happens, and the reason why nothing happens is because the color we still have here is white. All right, so we have this we have this white color okay so how can we let this affect this object right here so what i did was to move this guy out of this and also instead of me having my color i will change this to um diffuse diffusion so once i change that to diffusion i still have that then under my diffusion, that is what I'm going to add this guy. So I'm going to drag this to my diffusion and activate that. So for the color, I cannot decide to clear this and add this. So let's see what we have. Okay, so we're not seeing any effects. If we come down to this cloner and let's see. So I, I had this issue. So what I did was to bring this guy over here and then another thing was to, I think I changed this back to color. Yeah, I changed it back to color and that is what I have. So if I, 
check this no i don't even think i really need this i don't think i need this okay and that still changes all right so that is how you different ways you can either you can add it to your normal custom shader or you can just add a color channel and add that and that is what's going to be reading so whatever you have in the color channel is going to be reading that all right so whatever you have in this color channel is going to be, so if i have a for instance if i go to this diffusion and i add um a different noise here and possibly maybe add this poxo noise and increase this 600 and add a bit of animation to it and i want to see the color that i have under this poxo which is in the diffusion so what i need to do is just come to the shader change this to diffuse it's going to show me what i have under the diffuse so you can use this to quickly troubleshoot and see what you have so that is that changing this with your color using the shader to change the color so i'm going to clear that so i have another scene that i'm going to use to show the animation so if i come over to this animation here so i already have an object if i play this this object is animated okay so what i have here is just i added some deformers here added some deformers and added to the object then animated the deformers i animated the um twist and the bend but i left the taper so without the taper i just had this okay? so you can actually use this to create your grass and animated grass and all that so this is what i have so i want to randomize this animation and then what i'm going to do select the mograph cloner add a shader effector to it and just like we had before shader effector is going to by default we want to change the scale so we don't want the scale what we want is and also do not want the color so i'm going to off the color so turn off the color rather so the only thing we want to change is the animation all right so for me to change the animation offset here i'll come under the parameter come down to where i have this animation offset change this so if i make this for instance 20 frames you don't get to see anything and the reason is like i said in the last scene for these changes you have for them to have effects you need to go over to your shading and add a kind of shading effect to it all right so you already understand how this works so if i come in and i add a noise shader you notice that everything is now becoming beginning to go different times so i can decide to now increase this guy so maybe i want to make this 350 and then add a little bit of um, contrast to this and if you like that you can maybe you want it to be short so you can so, so you can see that this animation is now playing a bit at different time so you can always go back to the parameter and change this time of offset so if you want the animation to be more pronounced the timing offset time offset you can just bring this up so everything goes at very different time but if you want the animation offset to be slightly different all you need to just come in and change the time offset make it very small maybe five so they appear similar but you notice a little bit of lagging in some all right so maybe you want to use 10 so you can see that you notice a little bit of lagging so this can actually you can actually use this for your grass because you want them to move almost at the same position but just a little bit of lag to it so you have that so change that so that's how you change your animation then if you now want to add what's it called if you want to add your um fall off to this you want to add fall off to this animation then you can just go to your fall off and add a particular type of fall off so let's say I want to add a linear fall off and bring this up just a little bit and rotate also then move this towards the side 
So what happens now is that now everything will have the same animation until the follow-up starts moving towards as the follow-up start going the animation will start changing the offset of the animation will start changing do you understand so that is more of this follow-up all right so if for instance i want to have i want everything to have the same animation everything except maybe a few of these maybe um three or four of these to have different animation then i can make use of the follow-up add maybe a box or a sphere a spherical great um, fall off to it scale this up so whatever that are inside that will have random animation except every other one will be the same thing except those ones inside here all right so we can use that to whatever thing you want to do um, so i think that is everything we've touched everything here we've looked at this with that color animation okay and about this um object based animation all right so i'm going to post this i also have a last scene which is this bonus and if you look at this i have this object now the difference between this and the previous scene now is that for this scene i did not animate this object i only animated the um the deformer so um i don't understand for some reason Cloner recognizes the um, animation of the deformer by default. But for the object, you need to go and turn off something for it to for it to see the effect. So I'm going to show you now. So just the same way we have this animation, it's seeing this because by default when we added this, everything is fine. So if I go back to this and I create a cloner, I this so let's play this for you for you to know that this object is animated. So if I bring this guy as a child of the cloner and make this cloner, uh, okay, so we could just make this here and maybe 50 and increase. So you would normally expect that this guy should animate, but nothing happens. But if I select this, you notice it's animating, but the cloner is not recognizing the animation. All right. So what's happening? The reason is because by default, the cloner will fix, will turn everything to be fixed clone. So it's making everything fixed. So anything in this hierarchy, what is affecting directly, if it has animation to it, is going to freeze them. But anything inside, so if I added animation to this guy, this will be seen. All right. So let me just quickly illustrate. So if you look at this, and I animate this guy from here so let me say at this point i have 90 degrees and this i have zero if i'm to play now it's going to recognize this because this is not the one in the hierarchy this is the one that I, so if you animate this it will not recognize that so that's why the other ones were animated so how can we do that it's just for us to solve that all you just need to do is just to turn off that tool that's pretty much all you need to do, all right? For it to recognize that. So if you come here now and you try and play, it still doesn't recognize until you turn off this clone before that is seen. So I just felt I should show you because I was having issues with this. I wanted to create a crane, a metal crane that takes um, an object. Uh, so, but then I got this and I thought I should share with you. So if you feel this was helpful, please do give me a like and a thumbs up if you feel you have something to say about what I've done and you have an, a contribution to add, you could also put your comments in the description below. I would really appreciate that. And also if you are new to this channel, please do subscribe because I do tutorial like this every time. So let's look forward to next tutorial, next more graph tutorial. So do have a wonderful day and God bless you. Bye.